No, we can't do it yet. What do you mean we can't do it yet? Oh, mm. Okay, hear me out, guys. Usually I like to start these Giga Hauls with like five or more boxes, right? And then go from there. But today, man, I have a few boxes here. Not as many as five, but I just really want to get into them. And trust me, I'm sure this video is still over 45 minutes long. There's going to be a lot here. It just hasn't come yet. All right, welcome to Giga Hall Part 23. Very excited to get into what we have here today. As you guys may or may not know, I'm doing and recording these in segments now. So I'll record, you know, three packages at once, four packages, then three packages, just because I don't want things to pile up in my studio and get that cluttered. Like I like working in a clean space. Plus, when I started this series, I was doing it when I came home from college one weekend or two per month. So naturally, because I wasn't living here at home to tend to my packages, stuff would just pile up. Now, living back at home, I don't need and I don't want things to pile up. And so I'm just kind of tackling them as they come in. That's just who I am and how I operate. Same type of stuff. You know, it's going to total like an hour of content, open stuff from, you know, a wide variety of places in the Cars universe. Very excited, as always, to get into it. And let's rock and roll with this first one here. An international package D100 Cruising Lightning McQueen. And before I tip my lamp over, I need to tell you guys a story about why I needed to buy this. So Trunk Fresh Green 34, fellow YouTuber, good friend of mine asked me to buy him a couple of these from Target's website because they're only five bucks. And he's not able to buy them from Canada. Like if you are an international, if you live outside the US, you can't buy from Target's website located in the US. Like it's kind of stupid. I don't know why they can't ship, but that's how it is. Like I can't buy from Toys R Us Canada website. Like that's just how the world unfortunately is. That's why eBay is the best because it sees no borders. So I buy them for them. I get them for them. I ship them out. Lo and behold, I come to find out I accidentally shipped them one of my, actually my only international package version I got from Spain, literally from my buddy in Spain. Very silly and dumb and stupid of me. I can't believe I didn't realize that. Granted, the packages are very, very similar. Like it's hard to tell what's international, what's not. I honestly couldn't really tell you. Like I think there's more languages on this one. There's that little Russian blurb or whatever. And I think it's slightly different on the front. I think maybe this is a little small. I don't know. Like for whatever reason, it worked out for the best though. I was able to get this one and it's on a much better card. So yeah, there's that. Still an added expense, which I wasn't anticipating, but my mistake completely. And the air trend continues. There are going to be so many airs once you look back upon Giga Hall 21, 22, and 23. This being one of my absolute favorites I've gone lately. I love going back to 2007 on an almost mint card with a KB Toys tag, which I think is out of business. And my favorite type of air, the No Eyes Air. And I love when they're on classic cars like this. Like the newer ones, because from Thailand, they just are white. Like it's just white no matter who it is. Whereas before it was the color of, you know, the car in this case, yellow. So very excited to get this and looking at the stock images here, man, it's such a trip down memory lane. They don't really use any of these stock images anymore. There's all the resin ones. A lot of them stuck around for a while though. And some of them are still pretty similar to what you see today. Like that purple Ramon one stuck around forever but most of them have been replaced by newer ones. Yeah, I mean, a lot of these did stick around for a good long while, but man, that's such a cool card back. I love when they put like a whole array of others you could find on the back. Now they, you know, you're know, you lucky if you get four. <laughs> a lot of them do have six, but their average is dwindled by freaking World Grand Prix Lady McQueen that only has one car himself on the card back. Now I was at Target today, and the day I'm recording this, it's like November 6th. 16th I think I went out to Target and I stumbled upon on a weird cart like in the middle of the lane it wasn't even an aisle it was like your walking lane over by the holiday section this special packaged D100 cars mini racers advent calendar so let me show you guys because you know we're all so obsessed with package variants these days here's the like main basic version like you get off amazon it's available some other places as well doesn't have like the special retro reimagined d100 packaging and this is the one i will be opening in fact 
You'll probably see my video on this, which I intend to do in late November, before you see this video, Giga Hall Part 23, just because I haven't even released Giga Hall Part 22 yet. And yeah, that's just kind of how I you know have things scheduled in my mind right now. But yeah, I don't know. This packaging is actually kind of cool. It's kind of neat. I love seeing McQueen on there in the cartoon way. I think the packaging, you know, it's honestly really cool. And so I decided to pick it up. I'll keep it in the package. I just, yeah, I love that it's retro. Like, I mean, look at the car's logos. They are literally retro or the one here is literally retro. I mean, the font, the numbers on it all is different. So I just find that really neat and cool. I honestly am surprised that they did that. Like, I cannot believe Target is taking on the Mini Racers advent calendar because, you know, they've been doing these advent calendars since like 2018 and they have never had them once. And now here we are in 2023 and they have it. I think that's a great sign. Like that's a good testament to where, you know, the car's world is at in terms of retailers. And yeah, I mean, everything looks really cool. Like I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. Although we were going to take him out because he's so reflective. All right, moving on to some boxes here. This is from Get Me Collectibles. Of course, my preferred seller. As I always let you guys know, his contact info is always in the description below. If you want to email him or just peruse his eBay store, which is loaded. He has so much good stuff on there from every era of the hobby. And he, I believe, if he gets an air in, I'm the first one he tells and offers up if I want to buy it. And yeah, usually he does get me with these. These aren't my favorite types of airs. Well, this one isn't, especially because I already got a Lisa Louise wheel air in like another previous gig all. So I told him about that and he's like weird, you know, and it is super weird. It's like, wait, why is this one character? And it is Louise. It was Louise both times. Of course, the first air, if you don't remember, her wheels on the front here were literally matchbox tires. Okay. Just even worse than this. In this case, it just looks like I want to say it wasn't painted, but that's a completely different tire too. I think, is that match? That is Matchbox again. No way. That is absolutely nuts. You could tell by the treads on like the outer edge of it. That is nuts, guys. I can't believe it. So every time I see Lisa and Louise now, which ended up being kind of a peg warmer two pack, believe it or not. can't believe I'm saying that about a two pack with two new cars, but I guess they are kind of identical. I always check them now because it seems like Luis in particular is very susceptible to airs. I mean, the fact that I already have two and they've only been out for a couple of months and both of which are swaps with matchbox tires. Yeah, at first I thought it was just unpainted except for the center hubcap, but no, that's a matchbox tire and it's on both sides there. You can see the tread on the other side there. That is just crazy to me. I cannot get over that. So there you guys have it. Another really cool air. I guess I would have, I thought it was just unpainted, which I wasn't super keen on, but yeah. And then here we go. Can you guys guess the air? A no eyes air. You guys know me. In this case, I feel like this is airing kind of fast. I think, yeah, she's supposed to have like another decal. Like see right there, there's another decal right on top of the fender which she just doesn't have either. So nothing got applied to the cab there. No eyes, no decal. Looking a little scary, looking a little ghosty. But yeah, everything else is in order here. And this is like my third or fourth Mini Racers three-pack air. So guys, things that get aired a lot, I guess, are Luis and Mini Racer three-packs. Like, of course, I have a Sterling and a, like the metallic Sterling McQueen's Cruise pack from like years ago, I have him with an unpainted tire. Of course, we have the Mossy Ivy one where the axle is penetrating the body. And then maybe maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. But I feel like there was another one in there somewhere. I know Astro Smokey has found his fair share of them. This is a heavy pack. It doesn't want to stand up on its own. All right, we'll put that in the background there. All right, let's move right along here. This one's pretty exciting. Guys, there has been a dearth of prototype action in the Giga Halls lately. The wells have just dried up from China, unfortunately. They have definitely dried up over the last few months. And thankfully, though, I was able to get this one by the skin of my teeth. There were a few others that I missed. This one, though, I jumped on. And it's simply an engineering prototype of Steve Karski, the Cars 3 Vitaline cab. 
You can see he has the 077 engraving. It's kind of hard to see because the cap is shadowing it. Yeah, it's engraved right there. So really cool. Nothing like too crazy. It's pretty slight, but it's the stuff that I like. And I'm glad that I was able to get one of these. VTL24 is the license plate. Makes sense. Abbreviation for Vitaline and 24 is the racer's number. Chase Racelet. That almost looks like a sticker, not even a decal. Kind of weird. Not in the best condition, but I honestly don't mind that with prototypes because it gives them more character. It makes them feel more prototypey. Like a perfect prototype almost feels fake to me. And I got a little gift here, I guess. This guy, the seller and this group of sellers always provides these gifts. And this is like a transparent, looks like a Jolly Rancher Rubber McQueen. I'll take it though. It's cute. It's cute. All right. Got one more box for now and then you know, I'll have to stop, wait for a few more and then record again. This is one I'm pretty excited about. <laughs> Can you guys guess what it is? It's obviously a two pack. It's before 2015, I'll give you a hint. It's before 2011. It is no stall and a leakless. One of the most iconic pairings of all time, of course, because of the accident that they got into there. Too bad it isn't the damaged versions. This was really the perfect time for them to release the damaged versions of these characters, which they ended up canceling. They were going to do them as a two-pack in 2010, and then they canceled them. So it still feels weird, though, that they did this and then intended to do the damaged versions and then canceled it. So it almost makes it feel like, well, we'll shoot. We probably should have just led with the canceled ones or the damaged ones because they end up getting canceled, right? On top of that, this is on international packaging, which just really floats my boat. You guys know I love international packaging. I've been absolutely flocking to Meyer stores in pursuit of these even cars on the road international packages. For this one, you could tell it doesn't have the new logo up there, only has one car on the back. Anyways, yeah, I just love international packaging is because it kind of offers a different perspective, another piece of storytelling, I guess. And yeah, this is really nice. I don't even have the regular version, like the American version. And honestly, I'm not even sure it got released in the US because this is a pretty rare pack. I got it for a really good deal on Mercari. And yeah, love seeing the other languages that they talk about. Yeah, I know you have Damage the King and McQueen, which was uber rare. He definitely, that one definitely did not get released in the U.S. I don't really think any of these did. Maybe Boost and Snot Rod, but these all were very rare. I bet a lot of people didn't even know these two packs existed. Like, I don't even remember seeing any two packs in this style packaging. It's like basically a final lap movie moments two pack, which just seems so foreign. Like, I just don't recall two packs being a thing in 2010. And it's kind of, that's also a weird thing to think about. Kind of everyone thinks two packs have been with us forever, and they just simply haven't. Like two packs were a relatively new thing. You know, they weren't. I mean, yes, you had them in 2006, but very few of them. And when's a year where they also didn't really do any two packs? And I guess they have been around for quite a while. But yeah, this is nice. All right, I'll be back with more stuff. What was just mere seconds for you was over a week for me, and I've just been dying to get back into it and start recording this part of the Giga Hall again, the next segment here. I really believe like some of the stuff you'll see today that I'll be able to share with you guys, not only our highlights from this Giga Hall, but from the entire series. Like some of the stuff is just game changing to me. So I'm very excited. Let's not waste any time. I have a few Jim Scavenger customs here that we are going to start off with. The first one being a Fiber Fuel Next Gen Pity. So yeah, we are really deep into the expanded universe at this point because this is not even the Gogo Logano Next Gen Fiber Fuel Racer from the NASCAR series. This is the Thomas Hatfield kind of universe himself where Jim Scavenger and him collaborate on those next gens kind of before the NASCAR series came out but I personally prefer their designs mostly to what Mattel ended up doing in the NASCAR line of course this all is because 
Pixar cut out fiber fuel, taco mint, shifty drug, sidewall shine, etc. from Cars 3 in favor of some new sponsors. So yeah, I will be doing a review probably for this soon. I also have the, that is not what I wanted to do. I also have the matching crew chief. So yeah, I'm not sure. I probably will do a video just on them, but I'm also contemplating doing a fiber fuel team video in the Piston Cup teams series on my channel. So we'll see how that pans out. I think I want to do team viewsing though first. I don't know. That's just kind of what I'm feeling right now based on everything I have. It just makes the most sense. Next up here is Tank Coat Crew Chief. So this is something that you know, may have appeared in the movie, you know, as Rich Mixon's crew chief, although he might, you know, it might be a different model. I know there are several factory, not factory, but there are several crew chief models in the movie. There's like an SUV, there's a sedan, of course, there is the truck like Ray Reveram here. But yeah, Jim Scavenger just rolls with the truck on all of them, no matter what they look like in the movie. I'm okay with that. Like, I think this guy looks incredible. I love the metallic pink. And in this situation, I already had the pity. So now I'll be able to match him up with that and yeah, do a video on those as well. I think this one will be a little bit more popular in terms of viewership than the fiber fuel one because it's actually based on Rich Mixon, which a lot more people are familiar with. Now this I am way more excited about than even those two. I've always wanted Mattel to do more lemons from Cars 2. And there are, you know, obviously countless possibilities in that movie. You know, the black minion gremlins and pacers and trunk ofs and hugos or the, you know, colorful ones that you see throughout the film as well. All the minions, right? And Mattel just only chose a handful, very, very few. They didn't even do like the main bodyguard ones from the casino and the London fight. For every family, they did Tolga Trunk of, thumbs up for me, Alexander Hugo with Party Hat, eh, like lukewarm thumbs up, would have been nice if you did him without the Party Hat eventually, but that never happened, and they never did a Black Gremlin or a Black Pacer. So here we are with just that from Jim Scavenger, something that him and I have collaborated on in this sense, you know, this is one that I really, really want done. And it was quite the grind, you know, it was a long work in process for sure. But I'm very pleased with the outcome here and definitely will be reviewing it soon. But yeah, I need to think of a name for this guy as well. But yeah, that is what we have here from Jim Scavenger. Definitely, definitely, you know, excited about that gremlin. All right, let's dispose of this. All right, next up, as you can see, is this ginormous Santa hat mater. You know... I got really like for, I don't know why, like inexplicably excited about this the other day when it came in the mail. Of course, at Cars Land, they had this Mater popcorn bucket. And yeah, that was over the summer. Everyone went nuts for it. You know, for whatever reason, these things are so popular to sell on Mercari, seemingly more so than even eBay. It's like, Everyone lists them around the same time. They're such a tight market, you know, you think you're getting a good deal, but you might only be getting like a dollar cheaper than the next best. Cause like these popcorn buckets are just that crazy. Like the market for them is nuts, right? So I got the one over the summer. I think I showed that in a giga haul, at least I would have hoped so. And then now for the holidays, they're doing a Christmas version of Mater as the popcorn bucket. And it's incredible. I love the detail on this thing. Of course, it opens. There's a lanyard included in there. Looks like there's a little note. All right, let's read it. <laughs> Hopefully it's not revealing of any personal information. Let me take a gander at it. Yeah, yeah, this guy literally put his own personal number on there. So, <laughs> we'll not be showing that. But, uh, yeah, Mercari has such strict rules about messaging and stuff. I hate Mercari, honestly, in that sense. Like, I love there to be another platform. Like, I love that there is a platform in Mercari in the sense that, you know, if you don't find it on eBay, oh, maybe it's on Mercari. But, I mean, eBay has this too, but some of their rules are just so strict. Like, I can't send pictures through chat. eBay, you can. I can't send links through chat. eBay, you can. It's like, oh my God, I'm just banging my head against the wall. I also don't like that until you get rated on Mercari, you can't get paid. So I have all these sellers like 
banging on my door, barking up my tree, rape me, rape me, rape me. It's like, bro, like I know, like I just got this like yesterday and I know like it automatically pays them if you don't rape them in three days or whatever it is. But still though, it is a little irritating because I'm a busy man and I'm not always there to rape them. Like I'd say 80% of the time, I just, the three days goes by and they get the pay automatically. But I try my best to rate them. It's just like, that's not a priority of mine, right? So Mercari, if they're a good seller, let them get paid as soon as I submit the payment. Like that's how eBay does it and that's how it should be. Anyways, I love this popcorn bucket. This guy's awesome. The expression on Mater is great. All the snow detailing is fantastic. The Santa hat just looks really legit. Like this is a nice hard firm plastic. It does have stickers, but that being said, they're very good stickers and nothing's peeling. I love this here at the end, the wreath on his hook, and he's got the jumper cables here with the pliers. Oh my God, it looks so cool. I think this is definitely better than the, I mean, obviously, it's kind of hard to compare them, but yeah, I like this one more than just the regular Mater popcorn bucket that came out last, well, over the summer, you know, it wasn't even that old. And so, yeah, I mean, it's so cool, right? This is so multifunctional. You could use this in so many more ways than just the popcorn bucket. I mean, I think that's why so many people love it. It's like a 124 scale mater. It's kind of like, yeah, this is basically in the scale of the Jada items, right? But not die cast, you know, it's plastic, but it's still super high quality. So I'm loving that. Next up, we have this Hot Wheels 10 pack. The reason I bought this is because it includes two of the rarer Hot Wheels beat that video game playable, unlockable cars, Speed Bump and Bully Goat. Now, I didn't even know that they were tossed around in 10 packs like this. You know, someone on like the Hot Wheels Discord sent this to me. You know who you are if you're watching. I appreciate you sending this to me. I didn't know that they were included in these 10 packs. And these 10 packs were very random. You know, it's not like there's one 10 pack with a very like rigid assortment you know just kind of random stuff gets put in there and they're not even related as you could see i only knew of their releases in the vertical drop play sets both of which being in them around the same time separate ones but in v drop sets so i had to get them loose the speed bump is much easier to acquire than the bully goat in fact the bully goat you know was the last one i needed to get and so now i actually have every beat that character, beat that car in the package because of course I got these loose before so now I actually have them in the package, you know, for whatever that's worth because they're, you know, all of those cars were released in so many different formats, so many different manners. Like you got Accelerators, you have a convention exclusive, you have mainlines, you have a five pack car, you have 10 pack cars, you have playset cars. It's not like you could just display them all, you know, in a nice concise way because they are so disparate, so incongruous in that sense, right? So I have a little display of like the Acceleracer ones and these two loose ones, but it's just kind of nice knowing that I have them. And yeah, guys, I know I'm kind of just going on rants about all the stuff I have here, but there's a lot to talk about. And here is the next item and probably the best of this Giga Haul. I finally, <laughs> excuse me, came into contact with a Precision Series Fillmore's V8 Cafe. Now, it is not in great condition by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, the Fillmore that comes with it is extremely beat up. Yeah, this guy has definitely seen better days. But I really don't care all that much about the die cast here. I just wanted the building. And the building, you know, like I said, not in great condition. Lots of scratches, especially on the road there, you could see. But it's gets the job done and you know if you made it through this far into the video i'm gonna just kind of spoil some of my plans for 2024 i'm gonna of course as i always kind of do freshen up the background here change a few things in around the review table my plan is to have this in the background of the review table for 2024 you know in some way shape or form maybe have this maybe have something else that's you know, not usual because I know Luigi's has always been back there. It does look really good. Like what I have right now looks awesome. Like I love how it looks, but it would be kind of cool to change it up. You know, what I have going on right now is like 100% accurate. You know, Luigi's, Lizzie's, 
Sally's, that's exactly how it goes in the movie. And so, I don't know, I feel like in order to create something a little bit more special, I need to break out of like that mold because Fillmore's, I guess I could maybe pull out Sarge's. That might be an idea. I'll just have to see. Either way, I want this to be included somehow or another because this is such a cool looking set. It's so colorful, so eye-catching, right? And yeah, the lights do work according to her, although I thought they would have. Oh, maybe, maybe she didn't give me any batteries. That's actually a possibility. I'd have to check later because it is screwed in there. But yeah, I mean, the windmill still turns, that still turns, everything is pretty intact. There's just some scratches. Really not fully sure how this gets so many scratches though, because it isn't something that you're like, you're driving around on the table like maybe Fillmore was. It's something that just kind of sits there, but yeah, it still was very well loved. And I guess that's cool to see. I love this thing, by the way, <laughs> thing's so cool. But yeah, so happy to finally get this one. I know people have been asking me to review it for forever. I should know, I do have this set, but I just kept it in the package. You know, it was kind of a weird time. I got this, I got the Flo's V8 Cafe set. I was going to open them up, but there were so many things to review during that time that took priority. I think this was like 2016. There was so much, 2015, 2016, there was so much going on that these videos just kept getting pushed back and pushed back and pushed back to the point where years went by and then they ended up becoming uber rare, especially flows, of course, going for over a thousand dollars sometimes. So obviously I ultimately decided with those to just leave them in the package because of their value and also because if I were to open them, I wouldn't necessarily have a great spot to display them. Now, here we are, 2023, things have calmed down. Obviously, the Precision Series has been canceled, and I start shifting my focus on getting some of these sets. I'm not going to open the ones I have, but if you guys do remember, I did acquire a loose Flows VA Cafe set, and now I have acquired this loose Fillmore set. So I have all the Precision Series sets in, well, no, actually, I have all of them loose. I have some of them in the package. I have Sarge. Fillmore, Sally, and Flo's in the package. I do not have Lizzie's, Luigi's, or Mater's, though, in the package, nor Ramon's. So there you guys have it. You'll probably see more of this video, but right now, that is all I have to share with you. All right, welcome back into Giga Hall Part 23. Let's keep it rolling. Got some stuff here I'm super excited to share with you guys, starting with this loose split wire from Battle Force 5. This is one of the rarest, sometimes you know, contested as the rarest Battle Force 5 diecast they ever release. I did get one in the package last year and then some ago. It was in a Giga Hall. It was in my updated Battle Force 5 collection video. But because these models are so unique and wild looking, I really love having them loose as well. So I do have you know the Vinicus, the Vilarex, I have the Primeval, so I really want the Riptile loose now, but this was another piece toward you know getting them all loose as well. It's not in great condition by any stretch of the imagination, but it's going to be hard to get one in perfect condition unless you literally open one, which is one of the cardinal sins. You can't open any of these uber rare Battle Force 5 cars that are worth hundreds of dollars. But yeah, super excited to get this all the way from Brazil. Looks really cool. I love the mixture of the chrome parts the bronze die cast, the blue trim on the wheels. It's a weird shape for sure, but it is super cool. And yeah, I do kind of wish there's a little bit more detail, you know, in retrospect, but very excited to get this one and we'll be adding it to my display for sure. Next up, another Battle Force 5 item is this big scale smash claw. So this is my first one of these larger scale items and I really wanted this. And I especially wanted to lose. I had the opportunity to get it boxed, actually. But what fun is that? This thing, you know, like I just said, these cars are so unique, wild castings. Like, why would I want in the package, spend, you know, even more to get it, and then probably just put it in the storage because I'm not going to put a box on display. Whereas here, I get a loose one, and it looks amazing. I can kind of play with all the features and just enjoy the full range of capabilities that this amazing item has but yes this is you know a super rare kind of like i said larger plastic scale release they did smash claw so now i just need 
the sky knife and again i can get that one if i wanted to in the package it's just like man though i really want to try and get one loose first but yeah so this cage here opens and this thing i got also from brazil same seller super dirty i mean i appreciate the sale and all that and it was a good deal i would say but super dirty not in great condition i think i mean it's in pretty good condition but something's a little messed up with this wheel like this wheel doesn't really turn so you can't really roll it you know it just that wheel just kind of drags along but this is the wheel that you know turns and this thing spins like i love that noise it makes too it sounds so intense but yeah it has so many cool features like, i mean these things kind of like bend because that is accurate to the show all the wheels in the show bend as such but obviously here on the you know miniature they're not going to do that on all the wheels you can press this button on the back right here and it pops up like this and yeah it's super show accurate i love this thing so much if you want to put it back down there's like a little insert yeah this thing can spin around and all sorts of things it's really cool but yeah there's a little insert right here that needs to go oops something happened here oh yeah here we go that little insert needs to go back into that hole right there and it'll snap back together there you go and then back here there's another cage that opens where you know another one of the people sit one of the operators it's also got these drills back here it's really cool there's actually a really good review of this on youtube by zug i watched it before i got it you know so i could familiar my, myself with everything that i was in store for and he does a really good job of showing you all the features but yeah i had to clean it off and probably still i'm going to need to clean it off some and then here at walmart the other day it's such a random purchase for me I got a bunch of Matchbox, right? You know, I know you guys are like, all right, Hot Wheels, that's, you know, pretty standard for Mr. Docket to get now, but Matchbox? Yeah. Well, let me explain why I got these because, yeah, it's super uncharacteristic of me. I love what they do. They're classics. I mean, you know, they've been around for decades, but it's just not something I really collect. However, there was a dump bin and on the side of it, <laughs> excuse me, it said 70 cents for all these 70 anniversary ones. And I was like, no way. I know they're short cards, but they're still the exact same kind of die cast that, you know, are in the full cards and the non-anniversary ones. And I'm not sure if the anniversary was last year or something like that, but let's see here. When's the copyright on this? 2023. Oh, so these must be pretty gosh darn new then. I'm kind of surprised that they're already on sale for that cheap. That's kind of wild to me, but hey. I took full advantage and got pretty much all the unique ones they had on in this dump bin. So here you have a 1960 Chevy El Camino. Really cool casting here. These are some that I would love to open as well, but I probably won't. Don't really have anywhere to store them. I love the taillights that that one has. And these are all mostly like classic cars. I love the chrome on this one. You have a 1949 Curtis sports car, one that you definitely don't hear all that often. Like an El Camino is a pretty... Household name if you're a car guy. This, have to be honest with you, it's the first time that I'm hearing of it, at least I can remember. And yeah, that's an awesome looking convertible. Here you have a 1975 Opel Cadet. This looks kind of like a Datsun or a Nissan Fairlady the way it's shaped, but it is not. I just love the taillight and headlight details that they do. Really, really nice. And yeah, they put the kind of logo of the brand in the top left corner of these cards here's a little different one because it doesn't seem like it's a little bit i don't know you know i'm not a big matchbox guy but i can tell that the packagings are different so for whatever reason they gave this one like a fall it does almost look like very yeah thanksgiving like changing of the leaves type of packaging which makes me think these are rather new so i can't believe they're already on sale but a 1985 porsche 911 rally car beautiful i love all the details and this you know these wheels here these tires are very similar if not like the exact same ones that were on my air luisa louise that i did in the last giga haul so that's kind of nuts that's kind of crazy but yeah pretty cool i like the roof rack there as well and there's a couple more like that there is this one here a 2020 or 2022 ford f-150 lightning i'm not a big truck guy especially new trucks to be completely frank but this one's certainly pretty nice 
Here we have a 20 Jeep Gladiator without the doors. That's so cool. And the roof is off. My mom has a Jeep Wrangler, so very familiar with these types of cars. Although, obviously, like the Gladiator is the pickup truck version of the Wrangler. I really do like the red on the wheels there. Rubicon. This one, I'm not a huge fan of this one. The Porsche Cayenne, Cheyenne Turbo. Sorry, don't know how to pronounce it. It just... Seeing a Porsche as an SUV has never been one of my favorite things, you know, one of my sights. One of my favorite sights is definitely not that, but I mean, it still looks cool, and yeah, definitely snagged it because it was 70 cents. Here we have a 2019 Subaru Forester. I love the taillight and headlight details on this. Yeah, see, this is an SUV that you expect, not a Porsche, right? You expect a Subaru to be. I think this is my favorite of the entire bunch, though. It's a 1957 Ford Custom 300 really cool really nice this car dart always reminds me of like the 2018 2019 disney cars because it only shows like half of the car and it feels like it's chopping off a good part of it and then there's a whole bunch of like blank space over here but yeah this one's definitely my favorite and then last but not least is this 1953 buick skylark convertible another one have never heard of a Skylark. Obviously, I know what Buick is, but yeah, this thing's gorgeous as well. I love all the classic cars that they included in this line. I don't know how many more there are. I'm sure there's a bunch. Like if this is 32 of 100, so they're all listed. I guess there's 100 then. I guess that that answers the question right there. So, anyways, guys, that is that, and I'll be back for more. All right, welcome back into the Giga Hall. For me, it's been a couple days. For you, it's been milliseconds. Let's get right back to the action here. I want to share with you guys some in-store finds from actually the day I'm recording this. And man, I couldn't be happier. I've been finding Case M remnants for about a month now. I've been really struggling, have not found a Todd, but every time I find them, I kind of find like one extra piece. Like I did finally find an Adam Rodriguez at Target the other day, still no Todd. And plus Adam is showing up in the half case M at Walmart. So I've been able to find actually quite a few of him along with Randy here. So although Randy is not in the full case M, he was cut out for whatever reason. He remained in the half version of the case, which is super surprising, but that's fantastic news for collectors because it makes him way easier to get, way less expensive on eBay because of just, you know, there being more out there now. And Walmart has definitely proven to be the easier store to find cars at this year. So that's also a plus there. But on the other hand, Todd is not in the half version of the Walmart case. In fact, most of the good stuff isn't. Jeremy is not. Mark Wilson is not. Squat is not. Miles Axtra with open hood is not. The only other notable one is Kabuto with flames. But today, I did finally grab a Todd here. Now, the crazy part was that this Target clearly had received at least three Case M's because they had five of Miles Axtra with open hoods. Of course, there's two per case. So you do the math, that means there were at least three cases there. And so there were three Todds there at one point, but I only was able to get this one here. I am totally happy with that. You know, I haven't been able to find one at all. So I'm not going to get greedy. Very, very pleased. Like literally, I felt so good leaving the store and I haven't really felt that way in a while. Like I find a lot of stuff, you know, I buy a lot of cars in stores, but I didn't, I haven't really quite felt as good, like truly and pure good that I did when I found Todd here. Like kind of brought back like that 2009 and even 2014 memories of chasing him because he's always been super iconic and super rare. So that was awesome. Grabbed him, grabbed a Jeremy, grabbed a Mark Wilson. You know what, guys? I'm going to slip in a little Easter egg here or whatnot. I'm not sure when this video is actually going to come out, to be frank with you. It's probably going to come out after the 12 Days of Christmas, but I do intend on doing Mark Wilson in the 12 Days of Christmas as a review. So that's why I wanted to pick up another one here. But yeah, honestly, this video will probably come out in late December. So yeah, I guess that won't be much of a spoiler at all. Here's a squat as well. So very excited that a lot of these really awesome 2023 releases are hitting stores in a bigger way. Now, these over here, they seem like in-store finds, but they're not. I actually got them from an online seller for a really good deal. This is one of the rarest singles of the year at this point because he was only in cases, 
Oh man, I think he was only in cases H and J. However, there's only one per case and he's not in either of the Walmart versions of that case. And neither of those cases have hit target in any mass form. I think there were like a couple, there are a couple reports of people finding case J at target and zero of case H, okay? So that makes Cryptid Buster Major here one of the rarest releases of the year. So I wanted to get a few more in the package. He is getting a 2024 release, you know, right off the bat. You know, probably people are finding it now in terms of the 2024 release, but still though, that'll make this package variant really, really coveted. I love how he's got these muddy wheels or tires that look great, but on the card art, they are just normal. So I'm actually glad. That's one thing that Mattel dud, <laughs> dud, <laughs> man, that's when you know it's 1230 a.m. Did, I kind of combine that with does, but did that Mattel was not given. You know, it's kind of weird. You know, you think that all they have to go off of is the art, right? But clearly they have something else because the art would not have just shown that, you know, I guess they probably receive a bunch of images of all angles, but still that is pretty surprising to me, but definitely a good thing there. All right, let's get into a few of the boxes that I have here. This will be the last segment of this Giga Haul, by the way. I think we're already getting up there in time. Definitely won't be an hour or anything of the sort, but it will be still, you know, a pretty hefty Giga Haul. So this prototype has been on eBay for a long time. And man, the peanuts just went everywhere. And I finally like just made an offer on it with the seller and he accepted. It was pretty easy, nothing <laughs> too excruciating in terms of negotiation. But yeah, a Carnival Racer Carlo Veloso from the Disney store. So yeah, I mean, there are prototypes of all brands, Tomica, Mattel, and even the Disney store. And this is really different from her regular release, the actual release, I should say. If you look at, I mean, right off you know surface surface level without examining it it doesn't look that different but trust me it is for sure in terms of the coloring and all that but yeah this is actually really cool you know not the best expression in the world i would say but it's nice to have you know a prototype of something a little bit different or a little bit more of a unique prototype here let's take a look at what the base says full base markings disney store ltd london bunch of numbers i love the yellow tires on these by the way they've always looked fantastic they remind me of the yellow tires that they just put on the glow racers light mcqueen jackson storm from the disney store so yeah that's kind of cool kind of a cool parallel there all right let's collect all these pants you know what we'll just let them float around on the table why not who cares all right here we go with some of the smallest cars actually probably the smallest cars i've ever received in my entire life here there's your comparison right there. These things are probably like one to, they're even smaller than mini racers. So they're probably like one to 130 scale. And no one probably has any idea what these are. And I didn't for a while until a fan kind of put me onto them. But they are capsule minis from Tomica, but from eons ago, from like 2011, 2012. And the reason why I wanted this one is because it's of a character that no one has ever else attempted, right? This is a red, like, Nissan Fairlady or Datsun, like Makmatsu is, and no one ever did it, right? I mean, it's just a background character in Cars 2, and this is actually so cool. I wish it was bigger, obviously, but this will certainly do. It's a really cool conversational piece. Well, if anyone would see it in my collection. But yeah, this is so neat. Really happy to have this in the repertoire now. And they did a bunch of these. And they actually came in packages that looked like... I mean, not quite like this, but it had a blister and a card and everything. And it's so weird. Like, just imagine how small those would be. I kind of want to get some of those now and show you guys. But they are pretty rare. And the fact that I was able to even find these is really ridiculous. Like, the fact that I found these is super lucky. But there you have a race team Guido with the headset. And then, of course, last but not least is World Grand Prix Lane McQueen here. Would be cool to compare him with the mini racer version. But I can already tell you, uh, this guy's going to be smaller. He doesn't have working tires or anything. And everything's like a sticker kind of. So, yeah. <laughs> Crazy. It is nuts how small these are. Although, I would say McQueen's probably a little bit larger than he should be. I don't imagine him being that much bigger than a dots in here yeah 
Interesting stuff. But yeah, I do really love the way they depicted this red Datsun or Nissan Fair Lady, whatever you want to call it. All right. So you know that friend I always talk about that I get stuff from my contact in China? Well, we got another one of those boxes. You know who you are. Thank you so much, as always, for helping me get this stuff. This box is not nearly as big as some of the ones I've gotten in the past, but still some really awesome stuff in here. The box is pretty big regardless though, so I'm going to leave it on the floor and just pick things out like a vulture. Oh my goodness, this person used so much tape, but we're going to navigate through. So here we have a prototype package for Brody. This thing is in horrendous shape, but I knew that. Although I didn't quite think that it was going to be like this. Yeah, yikes, this is <laughs> rough. Oh my goodness gracious. But yeah, it's got like a Minecraft name tag down here. Like that just looks like Minecraft to me because of the blocky design there. I mean, if you have ever seen prototype packages, they are so random and weird looking. But yeah, either way, this is a prototype Brody inside. He's got the numbering there on his wing. He's also banged up himself. You can see the tail down there is chipped. Yeah, I don't know. What am I going to do with this? I'm going to try and display it somehow. It certainly won't be the prettiest thing in my collection. But yeah, it's also kind of odd because this is like one of the older cards for Planes Fire and Rescue. It's like 2014. And yet Brody was a 2016 release. And then yeah, the back is just bright pink. It's so weird. I have a few of these like this where they're so weird. Like the packaging prototypes are so odd and off. Uh, but I don't have anything quite like this. Like I know I have a Sally that's kind of similar, but I do have to say a bunch of the package prototypes still look normal. Like all those Cars 3 ones that I've done videos on or one video on. So yeah, there's that. All right, let's keep on grinding here. Did snag a, another, or I should say a second Outback Miles Axe Rod that was canceled back in 2016. Just, you know, want to use it as trade father, you know, down the road. But it doesn't always hurt to have another. I only have one of him and a bunch of prototypes of him, actually. He is one of the best canceled cars, I would say. And honestly, you could say that about a lot of canceled cars. For whatever reason, the best always seem to be the ones that get canceled. But yeah, he was going to be in a deluxe twin case and made it with cone teeth, I believe. Yeah, he was also canceled along with Miles Axelrod here, the Outback guy. And yeah, Miles Axrod got the short end of the stick because Mayor with Cone Teeth ended up getting, before he got re-released though, he did get canceled I think two more times after 2016 and he also got canceled in 2010. But yeah, Miles Axrod here, Outback Miles as they were going to call him, never got such another look. But he is so cool with all these extra accessories on him. I'm going to have to do another video on him. I think I reviewed him like years and years ago you know, before my quality like got much better. So I do want to do another video on him for like Cancel Car Tuesday. So I guess this is the motivation I need going into the new year again. Don't know when this will be uploaded. I'm recording this on like December 2nd. So that's where we stand right now. Here's something completely new, a new prototype to the collection. It is a lenticular red with unpainted wheels and missing side view mirrors evidently. But yeah, this was such a weird lenticular release in my opinion he was in a three pack with sally and i think wet lightning mcqueen it was so odd but yeah he does not have painted tires there and yeah he's got the chrome base which he's always had yeah so nothing too crazy not going to blow your socks off but still a nice prototype to add to the collection and i never have even had a lenticular moving eyes red loose or even anything like i don't have it at all so it kind of serves as a double purpose Man, I hated these things. I mean, it looks kind of cool, but like, yeah, they're pretty bad. <laughs> Most of them were pretty bad. All right, next up, already coming out of the little tissue that she was, or he was wrapped in. I always automatically go to she because Alexis, typically, at least in my experience, has been a female name, but this is a male. This is Alexis Wilson, also a 2016 Deluxe. So we're kind of in that era right now. This guy did squeak out along with Craig Faster. And yeah, another wheel prototype here. This one's got, man, this is, yeah, Studs McGurdle's wheel. Can't believe I remembered that, but I'm pretty sure these wheels are from Studs McGurdle. And that is what makes this one a prototype. Or, yeah, I would, I would say prototype because there's no date stamp and there's a couple other things a little wonky with him. 
So yeah, it leans away from being an air and more so a prototype, but either way, really cool addition to the collection. Another fantastic deluxe. Like 2016 was one of the best years, in my opinion, for collecting all time because of the great amount of releases from Cars 2 and you know even some great stuff from the first movie. And yeah, before Cars 3 just kind of changed everything with a lot of monotonous releases, you know, tractors and racers and racers and racers, and my lamp just died, so that kind of stinks. But we will persist through. But yeah, like Outback Miles, a lot of doodads, a lot of accessory type things on the back half here and all these tires and wheels and whatnot. So really cool. And yeah, this one did manage to get released. Good for you, Alexis. You perform better than Miles Axelrod. Outback Miles. Now this seller sent a free gift of a, I believe this is a mini racer, Christmas Snowy Dynaco Cruz Ramirez. If you guys know anything about my collection or have seen my collection video, I have like a thousand of these. Believe it or not, it's not a rare prototype at all. I got a bunch on AliExpress a long time ago. So yeah, <laughs> thank you for the gift, whoever, you know, the seller, if you're probably not watching this, but you know what, it's kind of like getting you a pair of socks at this point. Although, I shouldn't be complaining. Prototype's a prototype, and you couldn't really get this now if you wanted to. So, it's a pretty nice one to have, for sure. I just happen to have a lot. So, yeah, there is that. And that's probably why it was a gift. The guy knows that they're abundant, and <laughs> that's why he offered it up as a gift. I understand, though. All right, there is something that I am not going to show you guys. And let's, I think this will be the final car of Giga Hall 23. As I rummage through all the papers. But I've already actually gotten one of these in a previous Giga Haul. But I found it so cool and interesting and captivating and mysterious that I wanted to get another one. Yeah, so many different reasons. But truly, this guy embodies all of those emotions because he's he is a factory custom, right? This is Hudson Horror Piston Cup McQueen on a World Grand Prix McQueen body. This one seems a little different because he has an unpainted mouth. I feel like my first one did not have an unpainted mouth. It's perhaps, I guess he might have. Either way, I wanted to get another one just because of how novel it is. You know, you think factory customs like are super easy to get there, you know, on eBay and AliExpress for $10 or less most of the time, 99% of the time. This one, however, is just not available, you know, at all. I've only been able to get through my friend in China, and that is the only source for it. I believe someone else got it, put it up on eBay for like $400. I don't think it's sold, so if you want it, there you go. I guess I lied. It is available, but yeah, for a crazy price, because you never know with a factory custom, the moment it could become like super common, like most factory customs are, right? The gold Cars 3 McQueen, for example, that's been around since like 2018. So you don't really know, but I would assume this one will stay very rare. Like this one strikes me as an older factory custom for whatever reason that just now is surfacing. Like this car just looks a little bit older as well. The one that I got before, it looks a little fresher. But yeah, it's so, so wild to me. And then there's the possibility that it's not a factory custom at all. And it's some sort of like factory air reject prototype type thing i mean he's got an interesting expression like i mean you just don't know with this one and so that is what makes it so cool to me and it's one of my favorites in my collection now and i'll probably have to do a video on it because i want more people to know about it this one actually is different from the first one i got because it is lacking the headlights so that's pretty interesting, and there's a chance that the one I got before also has a painted mouth. I'd actually give that a pretty good chance because of those missing headlights. Like They kind of go hand in hand. So yeah, guys, I believe that is all I have for you for Giga Hall Part 23. Some good in-store stuff, some good online stuff, of course. You know, Some of my favorites, we had this two-pack. We had this awesome No Eyes Air, some great Battle Force 5 action, and yeah, you know, if it is around the New Year's time, Happy New Year. Have a great time going into 2024. Give yourself some resolutions, some goals to chase. And yeah, I mean, I'm certainly going to put some goals in terms of my collection and what I want to achieve. There's a couple items I would really love to get. So yeah, what the hell? I don't have anything else to say. Have a great day. Thank you as always for watching and your support of this series. Bye now. Bye.